trying to push 50,000 subscribers this year on Globetrotting, be sure to hit that button to support the channel further. The recent downfall of Cathay Pacific came down to obviously several factors, and while the writing was on the wall for a substantial period, many certainly have their strong opinions about the airline. In the years leading up to the global pandemic, Cathay Pacific could be viewed as a proud flagship carrier of Hong Kong. However, the airline and broader group sailed into the unknown as time progressed. Before the pandemic, Cathay Pacific certainly struggled to keep pace with other major airlines as global markets only evolved. And while competitors were expanding and adapting to the changing trends we were seeing, especially highlighted in the Middle East, but could be extended to even some of your more significant carriers within Asia, Cathay Pacific seemed caught in a rut that it would need substantial help to get out of. This rut was group-wide, largely impacting them and saw them face challenges in making maintaining a solid amount of market share. The turbulent political crisis in Hong Kong, marked by what can only be described as pretty widespread protests in 2019, further impacted Cathay Pacific's standing. The airline was entangled in that political unrest I speak of, facing scrutiny and much pressure from not just the public but the government. The fallout from the protests really tarnished the brand's image, creating an additional layer that you should argue just wasn't required at the time for the company. There's no need for me to go further into the political unrest. At the end of the day, this is an aviation channel, but it's worth me mentioning as many will directly relate this part of the poor outlook for Cathay to just this unrest that took place at least before the pandemic. The poor outlook that I speak of certainly had a cascading effect on their employee base and any prospective recruitment that they had the ambitions of completing. The appeal for the airline had really diminished and for any future workers that were looking for a job, well, Cathay Pacific had certainly put themselves quite far down in the pecking order, especially for those that were looking to, say, migrate somewhere. Analysts argue also that the packages offered to prospective workers, and even this could stretch as far as their current employee base, were pretty much an insult in comparison to what was being offered elsewhere. So when I speak of the political unrest and much more that was taking place, why would someone go to Cathay? It would be a complete last resort. However, these pressures only really increased by the time the global pandemic arrived one year later in 2020, which if you were not careful, could have been an airline killer. The effects felt by Cathay were un precedented, and the recovery would ultimately come far later than most major airlines. Relying solely on international travel for its business model currently, which again, there's nothing wrong with, but when you take a look at the restrictions implemented that impacted international travel, well, the demand for Cathay services was rendered to zero, especially when the restrictions were so tight, with the airline at its worst points, barely flying hundreds of people per day, which is quite incredible when you have a look at just how many aircraft are typically at their disposal. We saw aircraft grounded and 99% drops in traffic were recorded month after month. And the thing is, I say month after month like it's nothing, but the reality is from 2020 to 2022 and even into the early stages of 2023, their numbers were utterly atrocious. That slow pace of recovery saw financial woes only continue. And while the recovery would eventually come and demand we know is now returning, it would do so far later than other airlines within the market, and especially those within Asia that I spoke of at the beginning of the video. And while now things are improving, the financial effects alongside much more will continue to be felt for years to come. Poor decision making by its executives is easily another area people will turn to that has been heavily criticised when we do discuss the downfall of Cathay Pacific. And sure, hindsight makes everything a little bit easier, as we can look back at certain decisions and say, well, now that was the wrong decision. But in the case of Cathay and some other airlines I've covered in the past, analysts and onlookers would have argued for some time that decisions made were hardly to be deemed as optimal. These missteps range from financial investments to route planning and aircraft choices, alongside decisions within the company. All these contributed to the airline's once very high reputation dropping off significantly. For Cathay Pacific, it has, yes, been a very rough few years. I've documented that here on Globe Trotting before, and definitely on the main news channel, that being just DJ's Aviation. You could definitely make the case that this 
all was only worsened when the global pandemic arrived, as that was something we were not expecting, and the heightened restrictions really saw them become one of the hardest hit carriers globally, with no demand to travel on their services. And really, I think the lack of respite hurt any attempts for them to recover. We saw some markets around the world open up for a brief period before going back into lockdown, and while that was definitely detrimental for the airlines as they were unsure on the best way to navigate this, do they bring aircraft back? Do they leave them grounded? How do they respond to demand? And how long will these East restrictions continue on for? For Cathay, it was tight lockdowns continuously. During the height of the pandemic, however, there were some positives for the Cathay group, and that could visibly be seen with their cargo division. It was an example of why sometimes having other avenues in your business can be beneficial, and while I'm focusing on the aviation side of things, this can stretch to other things that you do in your life too. If you are an entrepreneur, if you are working for yourself, if you work for a business, branching out can have its positives. But don't get me wrong, the cargo division didn't miraculously turn around the group and make up for the significant losses it was facing in its passenger sector. No, it didn't do that at all. But what it did allow was some of its aircraft to be flying at least and some minimal money coming in. Cathay, as you may recall, weren't the only group that adopted a similar style to this. And the very success that some companies enjoyed during the pandemic with their makeshift or dedicated cargo division has led a lot of these airlines and groups to rethink their strategies for the long term, which has meant potential acquisitions of freighter aircraft have been put into the picture, when maybe four or five years ago that wouldn't have been an option. While I mentioned the pandemic, because yes, that would ultimately be when Cathay was highlighted as fighting for survival and when times certainly got more turbulent, others would say that the group was experiencing these turbulent times even before restrictions halted travel, but that really was the nail in the coffin. There has been some improvement in terms of its market share, and we have seen passenger numbers recover over time. But as other areas have improved, the reality is that the company still still struggles, and other airlines and groups have been able to surge ahead. For Cathay, they will feel the lingering effects for many years to come, and now it is over to you. I'd love to hear your take and opinions on Cathay Pacific and really the Cathay group. While I focus on the global pandemic, and you're more than welcome to talk about the effects that they felt during a multi-year period, what about before the pandemic? Do you believe key decisions made by executives was detrimental to their stance? What else do you really think could be determined as a contributing factor as to why Cathay Pacific is now viewed in a different manner to how maybe it once was. I'd love to hear your take down below in the comments. Thank you very much for tuning into another analysis video here on Globetrotting. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Your support would definitely be greatly appreciated. Take care, be safe. I'll see you in a couple of days for more analysis right back here. And we'll fly